prayed. It wasn't those reasons. It was because God had filled my love, filled my heart with the deep love of all Muslims, of the ones that I know and of the ones that I don't know. Um, and eventually I crumbled. I was like, God, where are you? Like, I'm suffering here. My family is persecuting me. And I miss Islam. Like, I miss, you know, having the traditions that I used to have. My friends are over there in the mosque, you know, God. Where are my Christian friends? At church? I can't even go to church. My parents don't let me go to church, you know? Um, and so I was just so beat up over this to the point where I was like, I can't do this, Lord. I can't follow you. I wasn't even focused. I wasn't focused on the Lord. And that was my biggest, my biggest fall. Like I wasn't focused on serving him and I wasn't focused on his character and, and learning more about him and being in a relationship with him. I was more focused on my persecution and what I was going through and what I had to lose. That's what I was focused on. And then I was focused on, well, Lord, how can you bless me while I'm going through this? Don't I deserve some blessings? It was such a selfish um, view of a relationship with God, and that's not how it works. So I eventually crumbled under that view, and I had went back to Islam, believe it or not, but it wasn't on a basis of believing in this. It wasn't because Allah is gracious and had somehow said, no, you can't be a Christian, like, I will take you out of this. It wasn't for those reasons. I went back to Islam knowing it was false, knowing that it was inconsistent, knowing that historically it doesn't add up, knowing that it doesn't work. <clears throat> And I go back to Islam and I'm just like, I take my Shahada and I'm sitting there and I'm like, holy crap, what did I do right now? Like, I don't believe in this, you know? And so I go and I, the more I'm in the Ummah, the more I'm trying to force myself to be a Muslim, the more I'm trying to just completely change my mindset and forget everything about Christianity because I wanted these things that Christianity couldn't offer me. These petty things like a Muslim wedding. Um, and so I just... But there was a point where I started noticing, like, wow, like, I'm really doing this pretty well. Like, I'm forcing myself to believe in this, and it's working. I'm actually growing a little bit of faith in Islam. I'm starting to look at it and trying to do everything I can to make it look consistent and make the prophet look like a, <laughs> like a morally good prophet. Um, Muhammad, I don't even know. I don't even want to go there. Muhammad wasn't a horrible guy. But he definitely wasn't the best moral example, as Muslims would say. Uh, and so I just did everything that I could to convince myself in Islam. And I was doing pretty well. I started believing it. You know, I started saying, okay, well, you know, let's just forget about everything. I'm going to brainwash myself back to this. And so I... I started, I actually started a blog during that time. And it was for my own comfort. I was so torn inside. And I started a blog, and I wrote on that blog what I was going through, like how I was living this Muslim life, but how much I longed for my relationship with Jesus, how much I miss a Christian God, how much she was convicting me during this time, how much she was hunting me down. I, I started this blog and just wrote about, you know, certain things that, that bothered me during that time. When, when Muslims would say something, I'd be like, does Allah really care about that? Like, does Allah seriously care about something so petty like that? So I'd write on my blog, like, this is what I think. And then I would even use that blog and, and try, to, try to, I was about to shut it down and say, no, no, like, this is bad for me because it's, you know, it's a time of reflection. And when I reflect, I reflect on, on how much Islam doesn't make sense to me. Um, but David Wood had actually found that blog and um, David Wood, you guys all know him from AnsweringMuslims.com, Act17.net, check it out. Um, so David Wood found that blog and he started commenting on that blog and I was like, no way, David Wood just commented on my blog. Like, I watched this guy's debates for hours and used to take notes on his debates with Muslims. Like, dang it, like, I know that he's going to tell me stuff I don't want to know. And then um, I was speaking to Nabil Qureshi, um, his partner in the ministry, I was speaking to him through email. Um, and he was very patient with me. He didn't lash out and, and get angry at me for going back to Islam or get angry at me for deserting the God of, of the universe. But he's very patient and understood what I was going through and understood why I was feeling the way that I was feeling. Um, and he shared a little bit about his own experience with me and it really encouraged me. And so I was speaking to David through the blog a little bit and he was just, you know, going into things that I didn't want to know. Like, uh, he was definitely putting truth in my face. Um, I, I already knew it, but I, I didn't want someone to confront me with it. You know, especially not someone who I've sat down and watched for hours. <laughs> but, um, 
And then, uh, so I was just going about my days. I mean, to, at this point, I even started wearing the hijab school. I did everything I could. Like, I did everything I could to just be Muslim again. Um, I had gained all these wonderful new friends. And so, G David Wood told me to watch a show that him and Sam Shamoon were going to be on called Jesus or Muhammad. And so, I'm like, okay, that's really cool. Like, I could use, I could use that show right now, Jesus or Muhammad. And so, um, I skip out on my belief in Allah class, and I, I sit down at my computer, and I'm watching Jesus or Muhammad um, on abnsat.com. And so, I'm like, wow, like, I already know these things, but David and Sam were just putting it in my face and putting it in all the viewers' faces. And I was just like, okay, I don't want to listen to this anymore. I know the truth about Islam. You know, I know the truth of who Jesus was. I just, I can't handle this. I can't handle this. So I sat back and I was like, why can't I handle this? Because I'm acknowledging and I'm supporting something that is so wretchedly false. Um, and it, it was then that I was like, I can't, I can't do this. Like, I can't support something that I know is false and, and that is the cause of violence in the world and other atrocities. I couldn't do it. Um, and so there was a couple of weeks passed by and I was, I was at the park and I had my Bible and I was reading First Peter. And um, I had seen a, another couple of episodes of Jesus or Muhammad. So I was reading First Peter, and it was all about being born again to a living hope, um, and our, our faith being twisted to see the true genuineness of it. And I'd just been so convicted of, of the wrong that I'd been doing. And I've had like a couple of dreams, you know, that Jesus didn't come down in my dreams, but they were just dreams of, you know, showing me that I did miss miss the God of the Bible. I don't want to get into it because. Um, I don't want to say that those dreams like somehow brought me back to the foot of the cross because they didn't. Um, I never really had a huge dream experience of God saying, Nigeen, believe in me now. You know, and I, I used to get angry when other people did because I was like, I didn't have a dream, you know. And so I don't want to get too into those dreams. But um, they definitely, when I woke up, I was definitely reminded of the, the truth of the gospel and the truth of who God is. And so I was sitting there at the park reading First Peter and I was like, <laughs> I can't do this anymore, <laughs> like, I can't do this, like, I love Islam, like, I, I, I love it on a superficial level, if that makes sense, um, but uh, I can't believe in it, like, I miss you, God, like, I miss being in a relationship with the God who is alive, who is active, um, and so, by that point, that night, I had reclaimed, <laughs> it sounds hilarious when I say it, but I had reclaimed my dedication to the God, to the true God, the God of Israel, the God of the Bible. Um, and my heart just, it hurts, and it's, my heart is broken over what I've done. Um, just how much I've made little of a cross, how much I've shamed the character of His saving grace, because it really is saving grace. I don't want to cry now. But, um, I mean, I made these, these, these Muslims around me believe that that God didn't really save me, that, you know, I just want to be Muslim again, how, how badly I've damaged the view of what the cross can do for a Muslim to, to my Muslim friends. And it breaks my heart. But the only way to make that right is to, from here on out, you know, um, proclaim God through my actions each and every day, and each and every day follow Him, and follow His footsteps, and, and tell the Muslim world that... <laughs> I do believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, um, and that is the only way to make it right. Um, and I have to say that even now I still struggle with Islam, and I, I just feel this, this attachment to Muslims, and this attachment to everything that I knew and everything I practiced. Um, I honestly believe that what I feel is very godly and, and very... Um, there, it's just there for a very important reason. It is there because I know that my life is to minister to Muslims. Um, it's to, to share the truth of the character of the Lord who didn't leave me when I left Him. That is who God is. Who even through all my crap, even through all my bull crap, He turned my face toward, towards Him. And I, He doesn't need me. 
He can just use any other vessel that he wants, any other person that he wants. He doesn't need me. But I prayed to him and I asked him during that time, I was like, if you are true, don't let me go. And he answered that prayer. He heard my prayer and he answered it. Um, and I just want to say that I've left so many things out, so many different experiences out, so many different things out, so many ways that God has, God's hand has reached down in my life. I've left so much out. I cannot even begin to describe to you how awesome God is, how glorious He is, who, what the character of God really is. And I'm just excited to learn more about Him in the future and be obedient to Him because true confession in Jesus Christ isn't about saying that I believe in Jesus. You know, it isn't about words. True confession is about obedience and it's about trusting Him and everything. And I pray that my life can really show that. Um, and I do this for all the Muslims who are watching this, I'm doing this for you and every, everyone who's just having questions about God and I'm doing this for those who believe in God and who are, you know, have an awesome faith in God. I'm doing this for you as well so that you can see the character of the Lord and just how mighty He is and how majestic He is.